All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is harvest day here on the farm. Uh, that means we get to go for a truck ride soon. <laughs> Not sure. I hear that the prices of soybeans are up in Andorra de Vala, so we might be heading there this, to the uh, banking capital of Europe, maybe even the world. Andorra de Vala is known for its... Uh, tax shelter <laughs> basically <laughs> I guess wheat's a, uh, or uh, canola's a tax shelter commodity kind of like alpacas and for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about uh, back in the 1990s and even early 2000s uh, people found that they could put their money into alpacas and not be taxed And so what would happen was they would buy these alpacas, and alpacas would sell for three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000. It was incredible. Uh, I think the government finally put a stop to that a couple of years ago, and lo and behold, I even photographed several gorgeous alpaca farms that were not very expensive. Now, knowing what I know now, like, I wish I would have known, because they had there was one that I was like, 70 acres and it had like a bunch of huge barns with an arena and they wanted like 450 500,000 for it and I could have probably bought it at, you know and and you know turned it into some other kind of business but it's it's uh you know because the alpacas those people were trying to get out desperately because they just you know they lost everything when the government changed the rules all of a sudden alpacas weren't worth anything anymore <laughs> and everybody was getting out So it's a risky business investing in livestock. Uh, I think, you know, but people did it, and it was. I don't know if they had rights where, like, the if the the if your alpaca died, you wouldn't lose your funds because, like, the the alpaca's children would inherit it. I I don't know, but it was the, some of the world's most expensive alpacas. I always wondered that. I wondered, I'm, I'm like, you know, is alpaca meat really that good? Because, like, why do we have all these farms in northeastern Ohio that are, like, magical alpaca farms and this this alpaca farm and that alpaca farm and, like, literally hundreds and hundreds of alpacas? And I'm like, what are they doing with these? Are they making wool? I mean, maybe a little bit, but no. The big thing was that you know, I looked into it and I found out that's what was going on was the investing. And one of my clients had me photograph one. So I'm like, why are they selling it? First of all, why were they growing alpacas? Not growing, but like, you know, what's with the alpacas? All right, I'm going to go back one more run down the backside here, and then we'll go ahead and start the actual harvesting. And I'll hire a worker to do that. Once again, you know the drill. We're going to store, if there is enough canola to actually fill up both trailers or more, uh, we'll store it next door at the uh, agricultural center there. The grain silo. And we'll head into Little this afternoon and, and grab the truck and then head on uh, out towards Andorra de Vala to sell our canola. And so we'll have a uh, little truck trip. It's not very far from there to here. A couple hour drive in the mountains. So <laughs> should be fun. We're just going to get on the road. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and set this guy loose. And 
then I'm going to go ahead and move our grain trailers to the middle. Have at it, dude, chick, whatever what we got there. Miss Harvester, 2007. And our pH value is good. pH value is okay. All right, so we're going to move these out of the way because the harvester will, uh, these will get in the way of the harvester. Oh, God, it's almost full already. Hang on. Come on. There we go. All right. I'm going to unload the harvester first, then I'll move these. Pardon me. Uh-oh. Holy cow. <laughs> Hang on. Hold on, lady. Hold on. Hey, lady. I'll take over for just the time being. You can come back in a moment. I think the way that that filled up pretty quickly, I think we will have a lot of canola, which is good. He's good. This is the exciting part. Wait for it. <gasps> I still love this Ross Lamash Harvester. The Nova is like, it's the right size for what we own. If, when we, if, we get, if we do get a larger, if we ever do go larger, then I will you know, upscale the. If I buy another field, it would be the time to get another harvester. But in real life, I mean, people harvest their fields for days. So I don't. Oh, you're missing stuff. Brr, I have to go back and get that. Oh, well, you know how I am. Just a hair anal. So we're going to move this out here, and then I'm going to detach the trailers. And we're going to head on up to the farm. So I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to be uh, getting started on the mowing for the day also, because we need to get that finished. And I don't have to get that finished today, but we get it started today. Though with that new setup, we should be able to do it pretty dang quick. Uh, so I'm going to head up there. I'll see you guys in, well, we'll t I'll take you with me. I mean, we're almost there already, geez. There we go. I turned the all-wheel steering off. I feel like I'm coming home again. It's been a while since I've played on this map. Uh, it seems to be I get here about once a week, every once every two weeks to record. Uh, and we really are, you know, all my games I've been way back on playing, so I apologize. Once again, I, I know, like, my summer car hasn't been around for a while. We'll do more. It's just, you know, life has been rough. I know people, people are understanding to a point, and then they're like, why aren't you doing these games? Because I've got too many. And my wife was like, she's, she bought some diamond heart puzzles, and she's, like, trying to, like, uh, make herself feel better by, like, hey, you get any game you want, honey, because I, I bought these. You know, they're expensive. And she's like, you know, any game, what game do you want? What ship do you want from Star Citizen? So I looked at Star Citizen, and I'm like, Eh, I don't really see anything that I want. Like, I'm not, there's nothing that really, like, turns me on right now. She's like, no, 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 get yourself something. And I'm like, no, no, I just don't, there's nothing that I really want. <laughs> she's, she's like, Ur. well, then what about a game? Do you want a game? And I'm like, yeah, there's a lot of great games out, but I've got too, the problem is I got too many games and not enough time. You know, it's like I've got so many games that I love 
and so many new great games are coming out that it's like I just I can't keep up with them all. I've got like you know, Star Citizen's getting better and more and more fun as it goes, and you know, Flight Sim keeps coming out with great content. So you know, I've been playing Microsoft Flight Sim a lot, and you know, I just we, my wife and I started playing Forza again, and I'm like, I just don't have time for any new games. Like, there's just not there's too much going on. All right, so there's, today's the first day we're going to actually mow with confidence. Oh! Sorry, Mr. Audi. You should pay a freaking attention where you're going, you jerk. I was talking to myself, really. What are my dogs barking about? She's so nuts. My dog is a nut. <sighs> oh, yes. Yes. We're going to mow this in like 10 minutes. Thanks to Pottinger. Now, I'm not sure. I think today... We're gonna um, pretty much just sell the whole thing. I don't think I need any grass for a couple. Like this came up a lot faster than I thought it would, which is why I wanted to get it mowed because I don't need it. So I'm gonna turn it all into silage and sell it for money because we spent a lot of money. Haven't really made my debt too much higher. I think we're at 190 right now on our loan. We started at 250, so we've been paying the loan off, which is good. Uh, but we're gonna make even more money. Oh, there's my phone ringing. Mo money, mo money, mo money. Oops. Turn the wrong way. Hold on a second, folks. All right, I'm back. I've been mowing while my my wife called. I had talked to her for a bit. So I am. Look how fast we've mowed this. It's only 7:20 in the morning, and we're already almost done mowing the fields. I've got the harvester running over in the other field. Ran into a little bit of traffic jam. I put the carts in the middle of the the uh, road, and then I couldn't get around them with the harvester to empty it. So that's been kind of a pain. But I got that all figured out. And so now it's just a matter of getting this lawn done. Look at, how, look at how quickly that got done. <laughs> That's what we needed. We needed to make this happen a little bit faster. You know, part of the thing with playing without seasons, they, things grow so quick, so you have to kind of be able to cut them quickly. And that's why we, we did the upgrade. We got the bigger tractor and the, the equipment that we need to, oh, we got somebody full, so we'll be right back. Harvester is full up. Looks like we got a couple more passes on this field, and then we'll be done with this one and move on to the next one. I'm trying to get the light to turn off. What, what is that? Is it, is it that? There we go. Nice collecting canola. It's like liquid money. Solid money. Solid gold. It's funny how canola is valuable. In Ohio, it seems to be soybeans. That's what everybody grows in Ohio. If they're not doing corn, they're doing soybeans. You don't see a lot of like, I mean, we do get grass crop like hay and stuff like that but we don't 
I don't see a lot of people doing like wheat, barley. It's out there, but you just don't see it very often. It's more mostly Ohio grows corn and soybeans. Those are the two big crops. Um, I'm not sure why that is, but it seems like the wheat does better out west. Idaho, Washington State, Montana. That seems to be where our big wheat producers are. So there you go. All right, have fun harvesting. Cool. I got to head back up to the farm and get keep mowing. I'll be back. I like the way these uh, Pottinger mowers look. They're kind of strange. They sit forward of the, the arm. They're pretty strong looking. And they're nice because they don't draw as much horsepower as some of the bigger mowers do. and But they still have that wide swath. Um, not as wide as some, but wide enough that it, it's beneficial for our farm. Yeah, we got a good amount of silage. We have a good amount of hay. I think we're fine for a while. Uh, once we pay the loan off, one of the things I do want to do is I do want to homogenize our cows down to one breed. I don't know why I did four of each. That was so stupid. <laughs> Sometimes you just do things and then, like, and then you're like, wait a minute, why did I do that? I don't know why I did that, but I did. Because I'm silly. I'm stupid. Don't know why. So are you guys still enjoying the alpine farming? I am. I think this still is my, honestly, it's the only map that I play pretty religiously uh, at this point. Uh, I love the new map. I'm hoping that the new farm sim has this charm to it. And I hope it looks like SnowRunner. <laughs> I keep going back like I play after playing SnowRunner. The this game has great graphics, but then you go to SnowRunner and it's like, whoa. Like, why can't farm sim look this good? But it's different engine, smaller maps. You know, like the SnowRunner, I don't think you could have even like half this on the, on the SnowRunner maps. But still, it'd be cool like to have those graphics with tractors. But anyway, pipe dreams. All right, so let's go ahead and switch out. Uh, we need our wind rower. We're not going to be tedding, so we can leave the tether be. And I think my baler is over in the other garage, and that wraps. So we have really kind of sped up the harvesting process by doing all of this. Well, the grass harvesting portion, anyway. The other harvesting is just plain old harvesting. It's slow and methodical, as always. Oh, She's finished the task, so we need to move over to the next field. But we'll go ahead and run a row down here first. This window rower, I have a little bit of difficulty using along the edges. Like, I can't. There we go. The other ones are easier for some reason. Round here, this is primarily what you see. Uh, the wind rowers that I see out in the fields are like this one. A U.S. style wind rower.
the one farm we're looking at uh, to buy has about 32 acres of alfalfa. I don't think alfalfa is great for horses, except for maybe at certain times of the year. So you have to, I may cut that back a little bit, but um, it's, uh, I'd have to get a tractor and a, a baling kit. And uh, I found, <laughs> I think I told you this before, but I found like micro, there's a company that sells micro baling kits for small farms, like, like hobby farms. And it includes uh, a mower, a side mower, a wind rower, and a uh, a, uh, a micro round baler. So the bales are about a foot and a half high. You could pick them up by hand, um, but it bales grass, and I thought that was pretty neat. Um, so I may end up getting one of those. It's, it's designed to work with like 50, 50 to 20, 25 to 50 horsepower tractors. So it's really f like for small farm, but I might just do that. Um, and uh, we can make our own hay for the year, which would be awesome. Or maybe make a deal with the neighbor who already has a tractor. We have to see what the farm comes with. They had like four or five tractors on the farm, but if they're getting out of it, they may be willing to include the tractors in the sale. But I have a feeling they probably are selling the stuff. So we, we'll see. That one looks promising, though. That one's pretty close to where I live already. And it's got everything that we need as far as, like, horse stalls and stuff like that. And it's a nice property. The only downside is it's right next to the freeway. So you can hear cars going by day and night. Uh, it's a pretty busy freeway, too. Uh, so I was like, man, I don't know. But it is, aside from that, it is kind of a dream farm. So let's go ahead and go empty the harvester. So hold on one second. All right, the worker's gone home. Let's go ahead and empty this out. Yeah, so like I said, I don't think we're going to have two trailers full. Uh, I mean, maybe... Maybe. This was this field along and a little bit of the other field. So possibly we could fill up two tippers. Look at those berries. It's the Nova. This episode of Nova is brought to you by Ziegler Harvesting Heads. All right, we'll have to come back and get that other swath. As you know, they don't, unless he goes the wrong way, which he'll probably turn to the right, he or she. Okay, so we'll let them go. We'll be back. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. I'm tadding and windrowing. Blue, 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 blue. We're coasting. Actually, this mowing kit makes it kind of easy because the middle stuff's already kind of piled, so you just follow that with the, your, your nose, and you'll have a nice windrow. But I didn't mow it all that way, so <laughs> that'll work for a bit, but not forever. You can see here I didn't do that either, so... Oh, well, it was nice while it lasted. It's funny how this tractor is like, it's kind of revving. It's weird, like it needs a little bit of power, but not totally. So it's like, meow, 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 meow.
And from this point forward, I'm going to do a back and forth pattern. Make some nice long strips that we can bale. And then we'll sell all this, and we should make a decent amount of money off of the bales. Uh, definitely catch it on camera. And then we can pay off some of our loan. Like I said, I like to keep 50,000 50, of cash on hand. We're a little short of that today, but that's okay. That's because we bought all this stuff the other night, so we're down a little bit. But we'll be back up again once this harvest is over with, and then we'll pay more loan off, and we'll have our 50000 and move on to the next harvest. So we're going to have to do that for a couple rounds, and then we'll get some money, and we'll actually start being able to save money and decide where we're going to go with the farm. I could definitely see probably expanding out... Um, to that field to our left uh, with grass production. Um, maybe getting some more cows. But I don't want too many cows because the thing with the cows is you got to feed them. So, I mean, they're like, that gets pretty labor intensive. So, I would, 20 cows, I'm pretty, you know, like one one load of, a day of food is is been good. But if, they, if we get more than that, it's going to be like, we're going to just be making food and mixing all the time. <laughs> I don't know if I want that. So... Yeah, the sheet, that driver went the wrong way, so they harvested to the right instead of to the left. So we'll go ahead and finish this row, and then I'll go. Uh, we'll go get that straightened out and <coughs> get the harvester back up and working again. It's nice because they'll get that extra little spot done, but it doesn't help us at all when it comes to not having to go back and forth. So I'd say tomorrow will be a truck trip. I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, finished, probably most of it off camera. I'll bail it, and, you know, we'll sell tomorrow. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll do all of it on cam. But this episode is almost at an end. What should I do there? I guess we could probably cut this off here. I'm trying to think of how to do this the best way. This will probably be our last full pass. So let's go ahead and help the guy at the field. And as I feared, they did not get done all the way. Typical. They got lost, which happens on this field because of the weird shape. So once we get this all harvested, I'll be able to go down to that other line there and then get it rolling, and we'll get it all. But ta-da. And the worker's hired, and so we are all set. Get it all, all the field. I want it all done before you quit. Yeah. You never know. We'll see what they do. <laughs> Back at the farm. Put the windrower down. And let's row. So, we're almost done at my mom's house. Um, we've had the collectors go through and buy a bunch of stuff. We've had relatives go through and take what they want. Um, I got a collector coming on Monday to get more stuff. People from churches that want furniture are coming to pick stuff out. Um, just to get rid of it. Like, I don't, I don't really... Some of the stuff's worth money, but not a lot. I, th I find that the amount of money it's costing me to keep the house versus... 
the amount of money it's going to take to sell the house and be done with it are two different things. So uh, <laughs> it's better just to sell it and get it done with than to try to sell each item in the house. Yes, there are things that are worth money, but how much and how much effort to put in to sell and how much am I losing while the house is sitting there, you know, so anyway. We've really been able to move ahead quite a bit on that, and so it should be gone. Hopefully in the next month, that house will be gone, and then my life will be a little bit easier because there will not be the stress of trying to sell that and clean it out. It'd be weird when it's gone. It's just weird. It's like having my mom gone. Like, that house has been in my life since I was, you know, I grew up there for, spent 20 years of my life there. It's weird to think that I'll never go there again. It's just, I mean, I can go visit to see it, but it's like, it's just, it's a weird thing. Like, wow, that house is just going to be gone. And it won't be in the family anymore. It's just weird. It's weird. Strange things happen with death, don't they? It's just, you know, it's part of life, but it is also sometimes a little weird. Weirds me out. I think the hard thing is losing the memories. That's the weird, you know what I mean? Like, because you do have memories. Like, fo you know, like, now we have, fa you know, family stuff that we've kept, and we all have things that we kept. And I got family pictures and, you know, things that my mom kept from my grandparents. And so memories are still there, but it's just weird. It's like, wow, the, it's, it's gone. And it's funny, we live in a generation that really, and I, I'm, I'm kind of included in that. We don't keep things. Uh, we tend to throw things out and, and not hold on to stuff. Uh, and we're not, you know, it's like, yeah, it might be, it's a, a day and age where historical significance doesn't necessarily mean a value also. So like antique tables, like my, my mom had some tables that are, uh, did that get windrowed already? Yeah, that did. Uh, that, you know, were made like, you know, <laughs> before World War One, And they've got like marble tops and they're very ornate and nobody wants them. People just aren't interested in, in historical furniture anymore. Now, in the 80s and 70s, that stuff was hot. Like you'd get a lot of money. It was very valuable. But now it's like worthless. Unless you find the right people, it's completely worthless. You know, where it used to be, like, no matter who it was, like, oh, yeah, that's really expensive and valuable. Now it's like, nah, we don't want that. So it's just weird. Um, all right, so I'm going to go unload that harvester for one more time. And then I'm going to continue doing the work. Uh, I'm going to get this stuff all bailed up, and, and then I'll pick you guys up when we're ready to sell some of these bales uh, so we see how much we get. Um, but I'll call this an episode. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have gotten our field work mostly done. Uh, but by the next time you're here, the harvest will have come in, and uh, we'll have it loaded into the truck and ready to go. And we will also have our bales ready to sell. So we'll sell the bales first, and then we'll take a trip over to Andorra Davala and sell off the rest of our uh, um, harvest. And I'm trying to think of the best way. I'll just do this hate to do that but that's the way it was going to roll so there we go cool so yeah so we'll head over to andorra and uh, get that all finished and sell off the rest of these crops and we'll be uh rocking it we'll have some money we'll pay off some more of our debt and be moving along so ladies and gentlemen hopefully you enjoyed this video whoops <laughs> suspension of belief have a great night be sure to subscribe Thumbs up always help. We'll see you in the fields, in the mountains, in the forests of, of Switzerland and Germany. Yeah. See you next time. Have a good night. Bye. <laughs> so long, everyone.